Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And patch 10.05 has introduced a variety of new customization options, from new player cosmetics available for trolls and Draenei players, but also new demonic customizations for the class of Warlock, with the pets such as Dark Glare and the Tyrant receiving additional variations. Recently, I found a little bit of free time and I decided to spend it on my old characters to help gear them out, but also to earn some additional cosmetics. And when I saw that they added even more demon customizations for the 1025, I had to go get the new Dark Glare and the Tyrant models. And then I went back to get every other demon option. Some of these newer models will require for you to kill certain elite rares inside of dungeons, raids, and the open world content. One of them even has you solve a line puzzle inside of a boss room, while others can be unlocked through scavenger hunts and explorations. And I thought to myself that if I'm out here collecting all of these demonic appearances, I might as well put together a little guide to help any of the other warlocks help complete their demonic customization by going over the new demons as well as the old demons to help you complete your entire roster as of the patch 10 to 5. But right before we get into this guide, and if you want to see more guides like this on this channel, most of you guys watching these kind of guide videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you are mind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight 1025 or any of the future updates going forward. First, let's go over some of the newer demons that have been added with the recent patch 10.25. Starting with the Affliction Warlock's Dark Lair Demon, which can now look like the Ancient Observer. To earn this appearance, first head over into the Throne of the Thunder Raid from Mists of Pandaria and make your way through the instance on all of the bosses until you get to Durumu the Forgotten. You slay Durumu and then loot an item called Durumu's Glass Pupil. Toss the item into the very center of the boss arena, and then you should see a puzzle before you. To solve this puzzle, you simply need to count how many lines of each color currently exist. To plug in your answers, you first need to click on orange, green, and purple torches. So if you see three green lines, you will click on the green torch three times to get three stacks of the green buff. And you will do this with green, red, and purple torches to answer how many green, red, and purple lines you're currently seeing. This puzzle, however, does keep getting even more complex as you keep solving it. And from what I've been able to read online, every player may get a different answer when solving this puzzle. This is normally where I would just simply share my answers, but they may not work for you. This is why we'll be using this equation and a little bit of math in order to help solve this puzzle. In this equation, we have three values, P, G, and R that all need to be solved. G will represent how many green lines you're currently seeing, Red will represent the red lines, and P will represent the candles that are currently connected to a purple line. Then you will take the number of candles currently lit up, and you'll subtract 1. Then you will multiply by the number of those same candles. You take that value and then divide it by 2, minus the number of green lines that are active, and minus the number of red lines. And I'll give you the number of purple lines currently active, which are the hardest to count. So if you have the right number of green lines, red lines, and candles, then you should be able to solve every part of this puzzle. I'm not the best mathematician, so this one took me a little bit, and this will definitely take you a little bit of time if you're not great with these kind of stuff, but just keep trying your best at it. You can keep repeating this puzzle as much as you want to, there's no time limit or a attempt limit, you can just keep trying at it over and over and over until you finally unlock your Ancient Observer skin. Next up is an assortment of Observer skins that can now be applied to your Dark Lair summon. All of these Observer variations can be unlocked by clicking on carved eyeballs that are scattered all throughout various zones of Azeroth. The first location will be in the Blasted Lands. You'll first need to turn back the time to the TBC Portal Invasion Era with the help of an NPC located towards the northern side of that zone. You will then find the eye that you can click on at the base left hand side of the green portal. The second location will be in Deadwind Pass, the original Karazhan. Click on the eye behind the door that would normally lead you out towards the Nightbane alcove. The third location will be found in Terrasfall Glades. Head inside of the Scarlet Monastery Chapel, and once you make your way towards the end of the tunnel, on your left there will be a separate room with two Scarlet NPCs standing in front of a candle holder. Behind that candle holder is where you'll find your next eyeball to click on. 
The fourth location will be found in Eastern Plaguelands. You'll be able to click on an eye embedded on a tree to the right of the Strathorn entrance. However, many players found out that they actually have unlocked this appearance automatically with the launch of the patch 10.25, so be sure to check with the barbershop to see if you've unlocked this variant already. The fifth location will be found inside of Ankaraj Zone. Don't go inside of the raid entrance, just mount up and then fly over it to get into the right version of Ankaraj. Go to the stairs that would normally take you up to the Prophet Sekarim fight and look for a pile of rubble to the right of those stairs in order to find your next eyeball. The sixth location will be found in Feralas. You'll want to head towards the pit in Dire Mall and then go down a set of stairs to a room full of hyenas. Once the room opens up after a corridor, you'll want to take a left to find the eyeball hovering over one of the braziers. Next we have some of the more classic Dark Glare variations. The first one you'll find from the very first boss, Zurel the Ascended, inside of the Legion dungeon Cedar Triumvirate, which is located on Argus, the zone of Eredath. The second one will drop from the Mega Dungeon version of Karazhan, Legion version, to feed the final boss of Vazadoom in order to obtain a dark blue variant. The third location will be in Antorus the Burning Throne Legion raid, to feed the portal keeper Hazabel to unlock a brown orange variation. The fourth location comes from the Tomb of Sagaris Raid, also in Legion, where you need to defeat Mistress Sazine in the lower levels of the temple. Next we have some newly added Tyrant customizations for Demonology Warlocks, starting with the first one which can be purchased from GG Gigavoid, located in the Warlock Legion Hall, who will sell you the appearance for 5000 gold. The second variant can be unlocked by defeating Radax, which is part of a world quest that appears in the Antoran Wastes. Simply activate Radex from his stasis by clicking on him and then defeat him to unlock a new appearance. The third variation can be found towards the later part of Temple of Sargeras Raid by defeating an elite demon called Ixalan the Soulbreaker just before you face off against Kil'jaeden. The fourth variation comes after defeating Archimonde, the final boss of the Hellfire Citadel Raid from the expansion of Warlords of Draenor. Next, let's cover some of the other previously found demon skins to help you finish out your collection, starting with the Wrath Guards. All three variations of the Wrath Guard appearance can be obtained easily with the Grimoire of the Wrath Guard, which can either be bought on the auction house or crafted with the Legion inscription profession. Next, we have the Abyssal Infernal variations for the spec of destruction. Just like Wrath Guards, the Abyssal customizations can also be purchased from your local auction house Grimoire or crafted with the Legion inscription. Next we have old Fell Hunter model variations. One of those variations can draw from the Fell Hounds of Sargeras encounter in the Legion Raid of Antorus, though it's a relatively small chance to drop so have fun farming it. Another variation also needs to be farmed from Time Rifts, which are located in the center of Thaldrazas. Time Rifts are generally active at the start of every new hour, and you'll need to defeat the final boss of a Time Rift in order to get a small chance at obtaining one of the older Fell Hunter models. Up next we have some of the newer Fell Hunter models, starting with the new variation which can be obtained from the Legion version of Karazhan. After defeating the Mana Devourer, head upstairs into the library where you should be able to find a torn page with a Voidmore Fell Hunter skin on one of the bookshelves. Another variation of the new Fell Hunter will require a very specific item. First, you'll need to obtain the Tsar Doom Great Staff from the Black Temple Raid. Transmog your current weapon into the staff or have the staff equipped, then head into a Taurus and defeat Portal Keeper Hazabel. Then enter a fiery portal and interact with the deactivated portal on the second floor. Afterwards, you'll get your Zorothian Fellhunter skin. Next, we got the Shivara Demon variant. To obtain any of the Shivara appearances, you'll need to get your hands on a Grimoire of the Shivara, which, just like Wrathguards or Abyssals, can either be purchased in the auction house or crafted through inscription. Next we have the Succubus, and currently there are only two variations of the Succubus that you can obtain. The first one can be bought with the Auction House with the Grimoire of the Shadow Succubus. The second variation has a chance to draw from the Hellblaze Temptress Demons, which come from the Cathedral of the Eternal Night Dungeon, from the expansion of Legion. It's a decently small chance to get the appearance, however, the enemies you'll be fighting to get the appearance are basic dungeon mobs and not bosses. This means you should be able to go into the dungeon, clear it out of those demons, then run out, reset and go again for another attempt. 
Next, we have the Void Lord appearance of the Void Walkers. And just like the Wrath Guards, the Abyssals, and the Shivara, you'll be able to either purchase them from the auction house or craft them with Legion inscription to obtain their unique grimoire. Next, we have the Fiend a variation of the Imp. And to unlock the Fiend, you'll need to first complete the Warlock questline, which was added back in the patch 1015. If you don't see the quest on your main warlock, you may need to make a new character, level them at least to level 30, go to your capital city, and then pick up the quest line beginning in positions, and then complete the entire quest all the way to the end. Next, we have a variety of fell imps. The very first imp option is the basic fell imp, which can be purchased from the auction house or crafted with inscription. The second variation of fell imp comes from defeating Terestian Ilhof, who is located towards the later half of the original Karazhan raid. Though this one only has a small chance to drop the appearance, which may leave you farming Karazhan over the next few weeks. The third variation of the fell imp, the trickster fell imp, has a very small chance to drop from bosses that you would slay in the time rifts in Thaldrazas. Unlike the other time rift rewards, this one also has a very low drop rate. The final Void Touched Imp variation can be purchased from the Time Walking Vendor during the Burning Crusade Time Walking Weekly event for 1000 Time Warp badges. Next, we have some very basic imp customizations. The first one can be obtained in Winter Spring by talking to VL and agreeing to give him a portion of your life. When you make the deal with the Little Devil, he will then teach you how to summon a Dreadfire Imp. A second variation can be obtained from the Dire Mole Dungeon located in Feralus. Inside, you'll find a little green imp that you have to interact with a couple of times until you finally get to slay him as a boss further inside of the dungeon. Like all the others, this one also has a fairly low drop chance, so this one may take you a couple of attempts before you can obtain it. The third imp variation can be obtained during Legion Time Walking Event from the Time Walking Vendor for 1000 Time Warp badges, which should be available for purchase in just a handful of weeks. The fourth option can either be obtained during the unique Warlock questline by defeating Twinkie located in the Deathmatch Arena in the Darkwind Fair, otherwise you'll need to wait until the Darkwind Fair is open and looted from inside of that same arena. The fifth variation will come from Machen Full Noon, one of the world bosses from the Legion Greater Invasions, which are located in various zones of Argus. The world bosses rotate every single week with six various bosses that can be defeated from the Argus invasion points. When farming this appearance, just be sure to check the map weekly whenever the invasion points update, and it should tell you when the matron invasion is active from your map. The sixth and final variation can be purchased from Warlock Order Hall, where you have to give Imp Mother Diala 15,000 gold just to unlock the Darkfire Imp customization. And for now, that's going to be the entire list of demon customizations that you can currently unlock for your Warlock as of the patch 10 to 5, covering some of the new ones as well as the old ones to help you complete your full collection. I want to thank all of you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.